Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar. Now, I've only ever read Sylvia Plath's poetry before, and that was in school a couple of years ago. And I remember one girl in my English Lit class recommended The Bell Jar, so I went out and bought it. And I always wanted to read it, but I never seemed to get around to it, or I was just... Oh, I'm a bit nervous about reading it, because I know, like, one of the main topics is mental illness. And that always, like, not worried me, but because I struggled with mental illness myself in the last year or so, I was a bit hesitant to read about it in case it set me off. But it didn't. It may trigger some people, this book. So if you're worried about a book triggering you, I recommend not reading this and maybe waiting until you've recovered more. This book was published in 1963 and that's, what, 50 years ago and it's still very relatable in nowadays. This is quite strange for me because when I read older classic books, like, I enjoy them but I don't necessarily relate to them. Plath's writing is amazing. <laughs> I can't compliment her enough. I love how she writes and I've always loved her poetry, right since I was 16. And I don't... Now I'm looking back, I'm like, why didn't I read The Bell Jar before? It starts off with this character, Esther, who is essentially Sylvia. <laughs> it's basically kind of auto, autobi autobiographical. You know what I mean. Um, yeah, and she's, this character has an internship in New York, and then she goes home after it's completed, and she falls into this spiral of like, I'm not going to say craziness, but she loses control of herself. And the metaphor, the bell jar being, like, enclosing her. And it's very hard-hitting. It's very strange to read about because I understand exactly how it feels. And it's like, this woman completely just... She understands me. And that's so rare in a book for me lately because I've felt so distant from books in the last five or six months. I, I've been in a reading slump to be honest and this has just, it's just picked me right out of it. This book, I just can't praise it enough. It, although I myself have never struggled with thoughts of suicide, it, like it suddenly makes sense to me how someone could have those thoughts and how it could completely control your life and that's quite scary. Finishing this book, I didn't cry. I wish I could cry, but I was just left so, like, emotionally stunned. I didn't know how to react. I was just sat in bed with my boyfriend as I closed the book, and I was like, I don't know how to react, because it's just so hard-hitting, and I, I'm left speechless. I haven't read a book like that in a long, long time, and I would recommend it to everyone. It would mostly appeal to probably someone who has any kind of relationship with mental illness, be it in your family or yourself, a friend. But I think it's also good for someone who hasn't necessarily encountered much mental illness to try and understand how these thought processes happen and what it can lead to. Anyway, I think... Uh, anyway, I hope that this little video has encouraged some people to read this because this has just made it to my number one favourite book ever, and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye!